Hola amores, welcome back to my channel and to another Cultures of the Americas video. And for today, we'll be discussing the Taino Indians of the Caribbean. The Taino were an indigenous people of the Caribbean. At the time of European contact in the late 15th century, they were the principal inhabitants of most of Cuba, Española, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, and the northern Lesser Antilles. Spanish priest Bartolomé de las Casas estimated that about 600,000 people lived in Jamaica and Puerto Rico, with as many as a million in Española. The ancestors of the Taino originated in South America, and the Taino culture, as documented, developed in the Caribbean. Taino groups were many times in conflict with the island Caribs of the southern Lesser Antilles. At the time of contact, the Taino were divided into several groups. Western Taino groups included the Lucayans of the Bahamas, the Siboney of central Cuba, and the inhabitants of Jamaica. The classic Taino lived in Española and Puerto Rico, while the eastern Taino lived in the northern islands of the Lesser Antilles. Of the four types, the classic Tainos were the most advanced culturally and were considered to be on the cusp of advancing their society into an advanced civilization. Advanced meaning having a written history, as they were also advanced in many other facets of human life. Many groups of people currently identify as Taino or having partial Taino ancestry, most notably among Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Jamaicans, and Dominicans, both on the islands and in the United States. Some scholars, such as Jaleel Suer Badillo, an ethno-historian at the University of Puerto Rico, asserts that although the official Spanish histories speak of the disappearance of the Tainos as an ethnic identification, many survivors left descendants, usually by intermarrying with other ethnic groups. Recent research reveals a high percentage of mixed or triracial ancestry in Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Taino communities ranged from small settlements to larger centers of up to 3,000 people. They may have numbered 2 million at the time of contact and almost 3 million at the end of the 15th century. Columbus was surprised by the civility of the Taino people. Columbus stated, They will give all that they do possess for anything that is given to them, exchanging things even for bits of broken crockery. They were built very well, with very handsome bodies and very good faces. They do not carry arms or know them they should be good servants. The Spanish conquered various Taino chiefdoms during the late 15th and early 16th century. Men were forced to work on colonial plantations and gold mines, and as a result, there was no Taino left to cultivate their own crops and feed their population. Also, European diseases caused a great deal of deaths as well. A smallpox epidemic in Española in 1518-19 to killed almost 90% of the surviving Taino. The remaining Taino were intermarried with Europeans and Africans and were incorporated into the Spanish colonies. So now I'm just going to give a few quick facts about the Tainos and the islands in which they primarily lived. At the time of Columbus's arrival in 1492, there were five Taino chiefdoms in Española, each led by a principal cacique or chief, to whom tribute was paid. The Taino name for Española was Haiti, meaning lands of high mountains, which is the source of the name Haiti. In Española, a Taino chieftain named Enriquillo mobilized more than 3,000 Taino in a successful rebellion in the 1520s. These Taino were accorded land and a charter from the royal administration. Despite the small Spanish military presence in the region, they often used diplomatic divisions and, with help from powerful native allies, controlled most of the region. In exchange for a seasonal salary, religious and language education, the Taino were required to work for Spanish and Indian landowners. This system of labor was part of the encomienda. Frank Moya Bones, a Dominican historian, documented that Spanish colonists intermarried with Taino women. Over time, some of their mixed descendants intermarried with Africans, creating a triracial culture. 1514 census records reveal that 40% of Spanish men on the island of Española had Taino wives. Evidence also suggests that some Taino men and African women intermarried and lived in relatively isolated maroon communities in the interior of the island, where they developed into a hybrid population of peasants, with little or no interference from the Spanish authorities. Scholars also note that contemporary rural Dominicans retain elements of Taino culture, including linguistic features, agricultural practices, food practices, medicine, fishing practices, technology, architecture, oral history, and religious views. 
It is estimated that as many as 50,000 Taino lived in Puerto Rico at the time of Columbus's arrival in 1493. The Taino called the island Borinquen, in Spanish Borinquen, the lands of the brave lord. By about 1515, a mere seven years after Spanish colonists, led by Governor Ponce de Leon, settled on Puerto Rico, the native Taino population had been reduced to 4,000, and by the middle of the 16th century, only a few dozen remained. In 1511, several caciques in Puerto Rico, such as Aguaybana, Hayuya, Humacao, Uruyuan, Guarionex, and Orocubix allied with the Carib and tried to oust the Spaniards. The revolt was suppressed by the Indo-Spanish forces of Juan Ponce de Leon. The mountains known today in Puerto Rico were known as deities, and some of the more supreme deities were Yucahu, which was the spirit of food cassava in the sea, and his mother at the bay, who was the goddess of fresh water and human fertility. The most elaborate ball and dance course of Puerto Rico has been found at the Caguana site in the mountains in the central west portion of the island. The site has revealed pottery dating from lithic ages. The site was originally excavated in 1941 by J. Alden Mason and was helped to be restored by Ricardo Alegría for the Instituto de Cultura Puerto Riqueña. In February 2018, a DNA study from an ancient tooth determined that the Tainos have living descendants in Puerto Rico, indicating that most Puerto Ricans have a degree of Taino ancestry. Also, a recent study of a population in eastern Puerto Rico, where the majority of persons tested claimed Taino ancestry and pedigree, showed that they had 61% maternal DNA and 0% Y chromosome DNA, in other words, distant paternal ancestry, demonstrating, as expected, that it is a hybrid Creole population. Cuba was divided into 29 chiefdoms, many of which have given their name to modern cities, including Havana, Batabano, Camagüey, Baracoa, and Bayamo. Throughout the colonial period, Spanish authorities refused to acknowledge the existence of Taino people. Yet 19th century records are full of references to caserios, or Indian kinship communities, in the mountains of eastern Oriente province. Even José Martí, revolutionary apostle of Cuban independence, recorded how he was tracked by the Indios de Garrido, or Indian scouts from Yateras under the command of Spanish Lieutenant Pedro Garrido Romero. According to historian Alejandro Hartman Matos, there are at least 4,000 Indo-Cubans who are biologically more Taino than not. Taino culture is most fully preserved in La Caridad de los Indios, a constellation of small caserios of some 1,600 kin, nestled high in the lush Sierra del Cristal Mountains overlooking Guantanamo. La Caridad de los Indios was the most remote palenque where Indian families settled after being ousted from their last lowland territory in 1850. Since the Cuban Revolution, most caserios now have a clinic and school and residential bungalows built by the state. But the community's ways of life are infused with Taino ceremonies, traditions, and spiritual values common to many Native American cultures. By the time of Columbus's arrival in 1494, the Jamaican Tainos were part of approximately 6 million Arawakan-speaking people of the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas. The word Jamaica has its origin in the Arawak word Jamaica, which translates directly as the land of wood and water. Jamaica had over 200 village sites ruled by caciques. The southern coast of Jamaica was the most populated area at the time, especially around what is now Old Harbor. They were master carvers, producing many carved artifacts, including the dujo, a low wooden ceremonial stool used by caciques, and were well regarded for their skills with the bow and arrow. They hunted with a small, barkless dog they kept as pets. In 1655, when the English expelled the Spaniards, Tainos were still recorded as living in Jamaica. It was noted at this time that rural farmers spoke a dialect that was a mixture of Spanish, Taino, and African languages. Many escaped into the mountains to coexist with the Maroons, where still today many non-African plants are used medicinally, plants that were once part of the Taino pharmacology. Hammocks also are still made in the Taino fashion, proving that the Taino still survived for many years after the Spanish had left, with the Maroons in the mountains of inland Jamaica. In Jamaica today, petroglyphs found around the island are a reminder of these early people. The museum at White Morrow, outside of Spanish Town, has a good collection of Taino artifacts on permanent display. 
The Lucayan people were the original inhabitants of the Bahamas before the arrival of European colonizers, and they were a branch of the Tainos. The Lucayans were the first inhabitants of the Americas encountered by Christopher Columbus. Tainos had began crossing in dugout canoes from Española and or Cuba to the Bahamas. Population density at the time of first European contact was highest in the south-central area of the Bahamas, declining towards the north, reflecting the progressively shorter time of occupation of the northern islands. Known Lucayan settlement sites are confined to the 19 largest islands in the archipelago, or to smaller caves located less than one kilometer from those islands. Columbus thought the Lucayans resembled the Guanche of the Canary Islands, in part because they were intermediate in skin color between Europeans and Africans. The Lucayans were described as handsome, graceful, well-proportioned, gentle, generous, and peaceful, and customarily going almost completely naked. Peter Martyr de Anguera said that the Lucayan women were so beautiful that men from other quote-unquote countries moved to the islands to be near them. In 2018, researchers successfully extracted DNA from a tooth found in a burial in Preacher's Cave on Eleuthera Island. The tooth was directly dated to around 776 to 992 AD. Genetic analysis revealed that the tooth belonged to a woman. When compared against contemporary populations, the ancient individual shows closer genetic affinity to Arawakan speakers from the Amazon and Orinoco basins, with closest affinity to the Palikur. The individual was assigned to maternal DNA haplogroup B2. Haplogroup B is believed to have arisen in Asia some 50,000 years ago before present. B2, or B4B, is one of five haplogroups found among the indigenous peoples of the Americas. And now I'm just going to go a little bit more into Taino culture and society. Taino society was divided into two classes, Naborias or commoners, and Itainos, nobles. These were governed by male chiefs known as caciques, who inherited their position through their mother's noble line. The Itainos functioned as sub-caciques in villages, overseeing Naborias' work. Caciques were advised by priests and healers known as bojiques. Caciques enjoyed the privilege of wearing golden pendants called guanin, living in square bojillos instead of the round ones of ordinary villagers, and sitting on wooden stools to be above the guests they received. Bojiques were extolled for their healing powers and ability to speak with deities. They were consulted and granted the Taino permission to engage in important tasks. The Taino had a matrilineal system of kinship, descent, and inheritance. When a male heir was not present, the inheritance or succession would go to the oldest male child of the sister of the deceased. The Taino had an evangelical postmarital residence, meaning a newly married couple lived in the household of the maternal uncle. He was more important in the lives of his niece's children than their biological father. The uncle introduced the boys to men's societies. Some Taino practiced polygamy. Men, and sometimes women, might have two or three spouses. A few caciques had as many as 30 wives. The Taino women were highly skilled in agriculture. The people depended on it, but the men also fished and hunted. They made fishing nets and ropes from cotton and palm. Their dugout canoes were made in various sizes, which could hold from 2 to 150 people. An average sized canoe would hold about 15 to 20 people. They used bows and arrows for hunting and developed the use of poisons on their arrowheads. Taino women commonly wore their hair with bangs in front and longer in the back, and they occasionally wore gold, jewelry, paints, and or shells. Taino men and unmarried women were usually naked. After marriage, women wore a small cotton apron called a nagua. The Taino lived in settlements called yucayeques, which varied in size depending on the location. Those in Puerto Rico and Española were the largest, and those in the Bahamas were the smallest. In the center of a typical village was a central plaza, used for various social activities such as games, festivals, religious rituals, and public ceremonies. These plazas had many shapes, including oval, rectangular, narrow, and elongated. Ceremonies where the deeds of the ancestors were celebrated, called areitos, were celebrated there. The Taino played a ceremonial ball game called bate. Opposing teams had 10 to 30 players per team and used a solid rubber ball. Normally, the teams were composed of men, but occasionally women played the game as well. The classic Taino played in the village's center plaza or on especially designated rectangular ball courts called bateyes. Games on the bate are believed to have been used for conflict resolution between communities. The most elaborate ball courts are found at chiefdom boundaries. Often, chiefs made wagers on the possible outcome of a game.
Taino food staples included vegetables, fruit, meat, and fish. There were no large animals native to the Caribbean, but they captured and ate small animals, such as mammals, lizards, turtles, and birds. Manatees were speared and fish were caught in nets, speared or trapped or caught with hook and line. Wild parrots were decoyed with domesticated birds and iguanas were taken from trees and other vegetation. Because of the lack of large game, the Taino people became very skilled fishermen. Taino groups in the more developed islands, such as Puerto Rico, Española, and Jamaica, relied more on agriculture or farming. Fields for important root crops, such as the staple yuca, were prepared by heaping up mounds of soil, called conucos. The primary root crop was yuca or cassava, a woody shrub cultivated for its edible and starchy tuberous root. It was planted using acoa, a kind of hoe made completely from wood. Women processed the poisonous variety of cassava by squeezing it to extract the toxic juices. Then they would grind the roots into flour for baking bread. Batata, or sweet potato, was the next most important root crop. The Taino presence still lingers throughout the islands in the form of words that run through the hearts of Caribbean life, such as hurricane and canoe. There are also archaeological remains, such as rock art, that tell us something of the Taino's spiritual life beyond what comes down to us from the reports of Spanish priests. That's it for this video, guys. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Please check out my Cultures of the Americas series if you haven't already. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Bye!